Hey everybody, how you guys doing? Okay, we're gonna go on to our third layer of our mixed media pish. And what we're gonna do is first, take a light color. I'm gonna use light pink. If you don't wanna use light pink, it depends on what your background is, depends on if, if you have a lighter background than I do because I obviously have a darker background. Um, first, let me, let me just cut these little crinkles off that are driving me insane. Insane. Okay. They're driving me insane. And I keep looking at them saying I gotta cut them crinkles off, but I never do. Now, if you have a background, like I said, that is lighter, <clears throat> okay, then you want to choose a little bit of a, a darker color because now we're going to add some different depth. My depth is going to come, my depth will still be the dark, although the dark will now become like in the back and you'll see. So I'm just picking a regular, I think this is a folk art, it's called pink, Tickle Pink. And I'm just going to take some and I'm just going to squirt it on because I want to keep some of the color on, but I do want to color my papers a little bit. My, you know, my lighter, I call it pinks. My, li my lighter paper is pink. <laughs> so I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab my big brush. If I can find my big brush, here's my big brush and I'm going to wet it. And I'm going to get a paper towel because if I was prepared, you guys might have a heart attack. All right. And I'm just going to dab it a little bit. I still, I want it wet. As you can see, it's wet. And I'm just going to go in and start on my papers and just bring in some pink. And we're just going to kind of Rub it on. Okay. And it's okay to leave, you know, you want to leave some of your thing and we're going to, I'm going to show you how to get that off. We're going to take our spray bottle of water and we're going to give it a spray. And you're going to spray all over and then take your paper towel or if you have, I have rags laying around everywhere. Matter of fact, maybe I'll use a rag that way. I'll, oops, stop, whatever that was. I have old rags and everything and I'm just going to lay it on and soak up some of that pink. Kind of, I kind of like put it down and twist it. Like I like that. Now, if you like, you you want more of that green to come through, spray it a little bit. Oh, I put the lid back on that. Spray it with your water and then go in and wipe it. And you'll see it'll come back. Okay. I'll just go and get up most of it. If you want it to be cleaner somewhere, you know, if you want your red to come through a little bit more, your base. Again, a little squirt of water and wipe it. And that's the great fun thing. Now, if you're using watercolor to do this, which you very well can. One second. Okay, one second. I'm sorry. Um, you know, this is all, and I tell you, I save rags. I go to, um, you can go to Walmart, Pet Boys, whatever, and you can get like automotive rags and stuff like that. Like at Walmart, they have them in that automotive section and you get like, I don't know, 20 rags for like a dollar or whatever. And I buy them. They usually have some sort of smell to them. I have no idea what the smell is, but if you just wash them in cold, you know, whatever, and you have them, I use them for my, um, uh, painting. I also use, you see me use these quite a bit. This is when I was in the hospital. And when I like, these are, I don't know what I, they used them for. I have these and I have other things that when I was in the hospital and I said, well, if you're just going to throw them away, why can't I take them home? 
<laughs> and I use those a lot. They're very uh, nice to have. Um, if you're using watercolor, um, <clears throat> you can use the, do the same thing. Do the same thing because we added water. It doesn't matter. Use whatever colors that you want. Like I said, if you look at it and you're like, you know, I want more, you know, like I had here. I want to come through. We don't know what we're putting on this yet, but you just wipe and you'll see when you add the water. And that's the, that's the fun thing. You know, we're kind of bringing, you can make it as dark, the pink as dark or as light as you want it. Now we'll add another color onto this, but right now we're going to just leave it like it is. If you have a hair dryer or you have, I'm just going to go over so it kind of, if you have a hair dryer or um, a heat gun, which you don't need, I, I try telling everybody this, you, you can just go buy a cheap hair dryer, go to the thrift store. Um, and that's what you'll need for things like this. An embossing gun, which I have here, um, is awesome, but it's hot and it's for embossing. So, you know, it, it, if you hold it far enough away and I'll, I'll be using it because I don't have an extra hair dryer. Although every time I go into the thrift store with the intent on buying a hair dryer or used hair dryer for this, I come out with everything but. But I do have a heat gun and it is just for embossing, um, really. Yes, it can dry all this, but you know, you see everybody using their heat gun to dry. You don't have to. Just use a cheap hair dryer or the hair dryer you have at home and it'll dry just as well. So I'm just going to do mine real quick. And acrylic paints, watercolor paints, if you use your watercolor pencils, if you use, um, I wouldn't use crayons right at this point. We can use crayons when it gets down to the last, um, like last layer and we'll get there. But right now we're just kind of concentrating on adding some colors. This is a basic mixed media beginner's lesson. I do, if you do go back on my YouTube, I've done this quite a few times. I've done it on canvases and stuff, step by step. But I like redoing these because I have gotten so many more um, subs, and I'm so lucky. Oh, and I think I got a piece of my dog's dog hair in there right there. If you look really closely, I think that'll add some texture. Um, anybody who has animals like I do, uh, there's another one. I'm going to take that one out. It was kind of half flipping there. Um, this is just going to be a basic, which I'm going to teach you layer by layer. Like I said, I have done ones where um, I have glued stuff on the whole, you know, almost the whole um, base color and then kept building and building and building from there. Um, we can do that in the future. But this is just a basic. And once you learn the basic, I believe, of anything, whether it's mixed media, whether it's drawing, whether it's polymer clay, whether it's sewing, quilting, uh, knitting, whatever it is, um, jewelry making, I mean, your imagination can take you everywhere if you let it. So if you we do this and you're done and you love the process and you love it and you start looking at things in a different way, <laughs> which I do, um, you know, you'll find yourself. And like I said, this is just a piece of mixed meat of, uh, yeah, mixed media paper. So, you know, it, it's not costing you much and you can use printer paper and, um, you know, you really can't, you, you, you can't go wrong and it's so much fun and I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Next fun part is, let me see if I can get my glue open first before I start saying fun. Oh, no. I even cleaned this off. God darn it. Gosh darn it. Ah. That's right. Can't get the crippled girl. Dang thing. At this stage, we're going to be gluing things on. Now, you can use Elmer's glue. I would mix it with a little bit of water to make it a little bit easier to work with. If you choose not to, don't. If you have a glue stick, use a glue stick. If you have 
your Mod Podge, E6000 spray adhesive, um, Collage Podge, uh, what's it called? Um, matte, you know, gel medium, whatever kind of glue you have, clear, uh, clear gel, tacky glue, Aileen's glue, whatever you have, you can use. And the Aileen's glue, um, the thicker glues like that, you, like I said, I would put it on, you know, like a foam plate, paper plate, whatever, and just give it a squirt of water, whatever, just to make it a little bit more, um, easy to spread to your choice. So first off, dryer sheets. How delicious are dryer sheets? So what we're going to do first is I'm going to pull it this way. Some dryer sheets, apparently not this brand, which I don't care. It's going to be great anyway. Then I'm going to pull it this way. We're stretching it out. Some will really stretch. And I don't know how well you can see that webbing, how beautiful. And you can see like right here where it starts to tear. Perfect. It doesn't matter. So tear it in piece, like a piece. Okay. We're going to do one without coloring it. And then I'm going to color one on a thing. So I love the way this looks. Oh, and it even smells good. I love the way this works. And these are used. And I have piles of these because I love using, I love recycling. So I'm going to take my brush. Draw it off. Stick my glue, whatever glue you're using. And I know it's going to kind of go here. So I'm just going to put on my glue. Right on there. You could put it on the dryer sheet. It doesn't matter. If you don't have a dryer sheet, I'll have to go grab some toilet paper. Wait, so we can. I want everybody to be able to do it. And some people might not have dryer sheets. I don't know if y'all use them or not. Where do you throw them all away? Or are you like me and you find them under the bed after you fold clothes? Cotton ball could work the same. Giving you ideas. This is your painting. I'm just giving you ideas. And if it goes over the side, you can see like right here and I'll show you. I'll tell you, my lighting's really getting on my freaking nerves today. I, I don't know why lately. And I have more windows in here than I had downstairs. But it's so cloudy and icky. Now that folded and I don't want that to fold. And you just keep going in and putting your glue down and going over it. And if it's a little fuzzy sticking up, all the better. Now, I will be back in. You know what? I'm not going to. I'm not going to go run and leave you sit here while, to get toilet paper. What I'll do is I'll just use a piece of paper towel because it's the same basic thing. I think this is probably one fly, but who cares? So if you don't have, um, what you call it, uh, dryer sheets, right? But you want to use something extra for, you know, this layer. Use toilet paper, paper towel. And I, I know paper towels are a little, probably a little bit more expensive than you want to use. And I wanted it to, you know what? I'm going to get me a piece of toilet paper. I'll be right back. Please stare at that for a minute. Slamming the door. Okay, I'm going. I'm slow. I'm slow. Right. Bear with me. I'm sorry. I got me some toilet paper, and I ain't even you. I don't even use a two ply. The way we go through toilet paper here. So I'm just going to use two squares. You don't have to. You can tear it if you want. And let's do some toilet paper over here. Now we'll just make it go straight across. But you can put it wherever you want. I know. Sounds right. Well, odd, right? Why would she use toilet paper? Ooh, then there's going to be stories. Was it, was it new toilet paper? Or was it used toilet paper? Did I use this when I took a tinkle on the toilet? 
and then let it dry out. Does it have a color to it? But look how freaking awesome. It's like tissue paper, okay? I'm a tissue paper whore. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. I have tons of tissue paper, tons of colors. Maybe we'll use some. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm going to take another piece of toilet paper, and I'll make it a little bit smaller. Just tear it. Now I'll add it. We'll just do right here because whatever layers you put, remember, it's going to make it stronger. And we're going to do that. Okay, now I'm going to set this aside for a momento. You see, I'm a little French or whatever momento is. I'm a little something, <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, so let's take our piece of um, the, the other piece of our um, dryer sheet and I'm gonna pull it. I mean look at these little like these great little fuzzies. I mean these are awesome. So save all these little pieces. I'm gonna make you hoarders because these go great in especially if you do art journaling too because you can just use them. But we'll just keep it like this and I'm just trying to pull the edges off just to kind of give it like that like Kind of, I mean, you can do a Santa Claus, draw a Santa Claus and put this as his little beard. Look how fluffy. Okay, so let's paint it. Now, well, I know a lot of people don't have sprays. I know a lot of people make them, but I'm not worried about that. We will use acrylic paint. And I think I'm going to do a, what color is this? I can't see. An aqua. Just a little bit. So I got my aqua, it's just folk art, folk art paint. I use a lot of that. I'm just gonna take a brush and put it in water and get it wet. I'm gonna squirt just a little bit down. As you can see. And I'm gonna water it. And you can always spray it with your, you know, your um, water if you want it a little bit wetter. Now, if you have a bigger brush, I don't, I mean, I do have a bigger brush, but I already kind of got this one going. And you just kind of go on. I'm probably going to want a bigger brush. <clears throat> and you can kind of paint it. Now, you can do it in this as many colors as you want. Now, if you draw this with your heat gun, you could draw this with your um, hair dryer now. You can dry it on cool or warm, but if I do it with my heat gun, it's gonna melt. Now, that gives a very cool texture also, and I'll show you, but I'm not really going for that. Now, you see how we painted that. Let me just pick this up. Wipe up this. I'm going to lay that there. And I'm going to hold this far away, my heat gun, but just to give it a little help drawing. Now you see how I hold that on there, how it burns it? Which it's okay on the end. I mean, you know, it's like cotton candy almost. <laughs> That's why I said I don't suggest you using your heat gun. But I just want to get this middle. And it's putting holes in it and all. And that's really not what I'm looking for right at this moment. But it's very cool and I've done that many, many times. I just want to place this somewhere. I think it looks good there. Now, you all know I'm colorblind. So this is a turquoise color. Okay, I don't know why my lights, my lights keep going on my computer, like my thing here keeps flickering. I don't know why I have to get my daughter in here. I can't wait to get my tripod for my new camera. Um, but this is a turquoise color, turquoise. But when I put it down here, you can see it looks a little darker. Now just take your glue and you can just, you know, run your glue over this. 
it's a little wet still it doesn't have to be completely dry use your glue stick whatever you're using Elmer's white glue I think that stuff's great I think the company sucks balls I do not like the company I do however like their white glue although I haven't bought any and I might start just buying generic brand because they really made me angry but if you know all right so I got glue on that side and you can see it's a little bit wet and it left a little bit on the bottom um, I don't really care if there's blue on the bottom because I'm kind of putting that there now if you don't want to get your hands icky and sticky which what's the fun of painting just use your paper towel or your rag and give it a push down okay if you notice that some of it's not sticking or maybe you know you didn't get the glue on it like you wanted um, enough just take a little bit more and just you know where you see I don't mind little stickies uppies but you know it's up to you some people um, have OCD and are anal I have OCD on many many things um, but that's fine for me and I think I want another piece of that over here or over here or over here or over here and I don't know let me just set this over here to dry. What other color should we do? Because I have these little pieces. See? Now if I would have thrown them away, I wouldn't have the pieces. Now, y'all know that you can make your own sprays out of acrylic paint. So if you go to your drugstore, if you go to, uh, my drugstore is Rite Aid, but you can go to Walmart, you can go in their travel section and the pharmacy section and all those kind of things where they have like all the travel sections and you can get these little bottles. You can see this bottle is very loved and burnt by the heat gun. They're a buck, buck 19. I buy these. Um, you can also buy them, you know, anywhere, you know, any bottles. I also save, I love um, body perfumes that you get, like the, um, that come in squirt bottles like this. I save them. I reuse them. I save like when I run out of like my walnut ink like I have to clean this out that would be another spray bottle when you make your own sprays with your paint okay and I think I'm gonna do a purple I don't know what I got in here but let's let me just do real quick just to show you and you're probably gonna hear my dogs bark and I will apologize now because my husband and daughter are downstairs working on the room and okay, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna I'm just gonna make a little bit and I'm gonna shake us again. <sighs> I swear. <laughs> Who let me on the YouTube? That's what I wanna know. Alright, so we're just gonna put like a drop or two. Alright. That kind of just came out as a stream, like when I eat beef. Okay, so in that we're gonna add a little bit of water. This is just some spare water I've sitting here. Okay. Now we're going to take our lid and we're going to shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. Shake your bottle. Shake your bottle. Oh, shake, shake, shake. All right, that's irrelevant. Now. Okay, so now here's the deal. You can at this point, and I only made a little bit, and you can't really see it through the bottle because it's dirty and it's blue. You can add very, very fine glitter, which you can find Martha Stewart bought, sells it. Um, all the art stores, all the Michaels, AC Moore, Joann's, they all have, you can buy very fine glitter. You can use it in here. You can use your Pearl X. You can use your, um, what's the other stuff called? Mica powder. If you have mica powder, you can use, which I'm going to be doing a giveaway, I believe, on, let me see if I can grab it before I continue. Uh, I have all these giveaways planned. You guys are like the freaking best. I swear to God. I wish, okay. 
Um, this is called Glamour Dust. It's Ultra Fine Glitter Paint by Deco Art. So if you find uh, glitter paint, this is from Deco Art and it has extra fine glitter. You can use this in here to make yellow spray and it already has the glitter in it. And we'll do, I'll do a video on that one day when I do the giveaway and then show you because these are great to have and I have them in a lot of colors and I'm going to do a giveaway, I think, of a couple colors. Anyway, so, so you can add that in there and you can have glitter spray. So you don't have to go buy the fancy, you know, whatever. You can use food coloring. Lisa Richardson, I believe is her last name. Lisa, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. She tagged me on Facebook and she showed me her, she used, um, which I'm so proud of her. She used um, food coloring, okay? Um, as like, and, and sprayed her background like this. And I love it. You know, I have a video a few ways back um, of making sprays with food coloring. And I've made them where you just take your water, you take your drops of food coloring, you buy a basic thing of food coloring from your dollar store, and you can mix and, you know, you do your color, your basic colors, and then you can mix like your red and, um, uh, what goes with red to make green? Red and orange? Red and yellow? Red and yellow make orange. So if you do red and yellow, you can make orange and you can make different intensities of that. And, um, well, if you look at the color wheel, it'll help you, but I can't right now. I've totally lost train of thought. Anyway, you can use the, um, watercolor, uh, food coloring to make your own sprays too. And they end up permanent. So, um, pretty much permanent once they're dry. So, you know, they'll smear a little bit like everything, but, um, the great thing with using acrylic paints is they don't smear. Once they're dry, they're dry. Okay, so I'm shaking and I'm spraying. And look how cool. Now, if I look at this and I say, oh, you know what? I want a little darker than you put another little squish of the paint in, you know, because you don't know. So I will for the next one that I'm going to spray. So you see how I'm spraying? Okay, now let me just put another little drop in. to get it a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna give you a really good tip. You know, I gotta give my peeps some tips. So that's that color and I'm just shaking this up now. And that comes out a little bit darker, see? Can you see the difference on the camera? I don't know if you can. It is. So let me get this dried and cleaned up and then I'll tell you the tip. Oh, I should dry underneath. See, this is when the brain, it should be called Kelly with no brain. Because of course it's not going to dry underneath when it has all that on my mat. Told you this was going to be a longer video. I might even have to put it into two. I don't want to make anybody angry. But it's just fun showing all these different things to do, and it's hard to do. It's hard to do in uh, 20 minutes. But I shall try. Now this, like I'm blowing it dry, if you're using your hair dryer, you're way better off. But mine's making holes in it. I'm not going to worry too much about it. I got a lot of it out of there. So the moisture. Wipe that up. Bring it back. I need a little bit of color over here. And I will add. Now this one's kind of falling apart, so I'll just add that there, and then I put some extra glue there. Let's 
see how good that looks. And then I think we need some down here. Now remember, we also have our toilet paper and paper towel or whatever I put down on there. So that's going to pick up a lot of color. And you just go over it. And you add this is a, a layer of texture. Okay. So, so far, can you see? And we've used home home stuff. Another thing I love to use are I love to use lace. I have so much lace because I sew. So maybe I'll cut a piece of the lace. These are just suggestions. Does not mean that you have to do it. I'm just trying to show you different things. Maybe you sew too and you have lace laying around and I'll just lay this right here. And that adds a great texture with those holes in it. So make sure you go over it with your glue. If you're using white school glue or use your glue um, glue gun or your glue stick or whatever you got. I'm sorry, I forgot to close my Facebook and I keep hearing beeping. Okay, so we have that great piece of lace there. And also what I love to use is tissue paper. And this tissue paper happens to have some glitter in it. Who doesn't love glitter? So just take a piece off. And we'll pick a place to glue. And you can glue over something you already put on or whatever you want to do. And clear is great because you'll see, white's great because you'll see like, um, I don't know if I can show you. Wait, maybe I'll get a chance. Okay, so we're just, we're piling on. We're letting it know, like, we're mean in business. But I'm going to show you something really cool. And I'm going to set this aside to dry. I'm going to put, you want to use white tissue paper. All right. And then let me just show you this really quickly. Yeah. Okay, let me show you this. You want to use an archival ink. This is Ranger's Archival Ink. You can use um, Memento. You can use Stays On, okay, because you want it to not smear. If you don't have these, use black acrylic paint to stamp. You know, you just put, get a small brush, put some of your black paint on it, rub it on, you know, like lightly on there, and then um, use that. Um, if you only have water color, um, you know, regular, like this is Stays On. Um, if you only have the ink pad that kind of does smear, don't worry about it. Use it anyway. It doesn't matter because we're just, I just want to show you the, a very cool thing when you use stamps. I'm an owl freak. Love owls. Okay. So you would just ink up whatever, with whatever you're using. And then we're going to stamp, make sure your paper's flat. Stamp on your, I should have had a little pushy thing under there. Stamp on your paper for a second. Lift it up and we have an image. Now I'm gonna wipe this off. Give that a second to dry. Now you could take your heat gun or your hair dryer I just want to make sure I get the ink off here because I'm not going to. Okay. Of course, she's obsessive over her stamps. She wipes the ink off. Not usually, but on that one because I'm using it for my daughter's thing. Okay, so anyway, so we have our owl. So we're just going to heat it. Use your hair dryer, your heat gun, whatever, because you want it to 
not smear. And you don't necessarily have to do this. I do it because I want it to the ink to dry. And this is a really cool trick. So that should be dry. Because, you know, when you stamp it, you're still getting a little bit of the uh, ink is still soaking in a little bit. And you want to make sure that you, um, you know, give it a few minutes to dry before you go to use it or it will smear. But I'm just going to cut an oval shape. Nothing fancy, just to show you guys. And if you got the stuff to do this at home, do this too, because this is great. Tissue paper, you get at the dollar store, cheap, 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 and it makes wonderful, every color I have makes wonderful, wonderful um, layers. And you can do so much. I could teach you so much, so much. All right, down in this corner, we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. I'm gonna bring you in a little closer, like that. Here we go. I'm gonna take my glue, whatever glue you're using. You get an idea of how much, how big this is. Bring it over. I'm gonna set down my owl. And if you have some hanging over, no big deal. Remember, we're gonna cut off all those ends. And then we're gonna go over it with our glue. And what happens is the white will disappear into the background. So it doesn't look like you really stamped on it. And this is fun to do in your art journal. And you can see the tissue paper just kind of comes off from the glue, from me putting too much glue on there. But it looks like, so when you dry, I'll have these glitters around me. And I, I didn't have that bottom layer of the lace dry yet. I'm gonna have to add more glue there. and leave it dry good. It's my only problem, glue takes forever to dry. So, wherever you add you know, wherever you add that, the white paper sinks in when the glue gets on it and you don't really see it and it just looks like another layer behind it. And you get this really cool stamped effect that looks like you like stamped it right on there, but now it's sealed in, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. That's just how I explain it. It's really cool to do. As another layer, you're getting another strong layer of your tissue paper on top of your paper on there. And it looks, like I said, you put it over the lace. And, you know, once it dries, all the glue dries clear. And it looks really cool. And you get another layer. So I think that's all I'm going to torture you with today. Um, since we're pretty long here, I don't want to keep it too long. So if you decide that you want to do the tissue paper or any of these, while you have your glue on it and it's wet, if you want to sprinkle a little glitter, go ahead. Mica powder, go ahead. Per what Perlex, what whatever you want. And you can just glitter, you know, sprinkle a little bit on there everywhere and you get extra, um, extra, you know, a little bit extra texture. See, look how cool that paper looks. It just looks like we have glitter on there on all the layers. And then when we go over with our right here, I don't know how well you can see it. Um, you know, when we go in with our next layer and all, we have the layer of the dryer sheets and, you know, all this cool stuff. And I really have to let it dry. It's not gonna, not gonna do me no good. Now, does it matter, you know, if we don't do our, like this and the owls down here? No, we can cover him if we want. We don't have to do anything um, with him. You know what I mean? We can just leave his head stick out. We can do, we can do whatever we want. Color it in with a colored pencil if you want. So like I said, think outside, you know, of what, of some of the stuff that you have at home. Dryer sheets, uh, paper towels, toilet paper, baby wipes um, that are used, you know, like if, or not even used, if you just take one and let it dry. Um, the next thing we'll be doing is stamping. And then we'll be deciding what we're going to use as our main um, 
you know, what, what we're going to use as our main focus. So we're getting there. We're up three layers and, you know, it's a little wet right now, so it's a little floppy. But once it dries, it'll dry nice. And don't worry if it curls up a little bit. It's not a big deal. Um, you know, but we're getting there. Now, if you want to cover cover everything on here, like all these pieces, and put stuff on it, go to town. You're free to do whatever you want. Um, you know, I just am showing you, like I said, the basics. And that's about it for this one. So this is this lo this lesson. And I love using, like I said, uh, the dryer sheets, paper towels, toilet paper, whatever, tissue paper. If you have tissue paper, go to town, wrinkle, squish your tissue paper up and then open it and put it on so you get texture. Um, do whatever you want. So once this is dry, we're going to use some masking tape and... Um, some stamps and some playing around and that'll be our next our next thing and don't forget make your own make your own spray paint oh here's my tip when you're done using this for the day you're done working and everything like that take your lid off all right leave that sit there and then squirt this it's gonna drip out the bottom some light I don't care but squirt until it's all the way through take it into some clear water in your sink or if you have a bottle sitting by like I do and squirt it so it comes out clear because and then wipe your little nozzle thing because what happens is if you don't do that the acrylic paint if you don't use this daily will dry and it'll dry in here it'll dry in your tube up here and you won't be able to spray it so you should do that with all your your uh, spray bottles, no matter what they are. Um, and that'll help you so much instead of the next time you go using it and you're spraying it and it's stuck. And then I had to go get my sink full of hot water and, you know, leave everything soak and get the paint out. And then it was a mess. So that's what I do. Some people even will store them upside down. Um, I don't, I don't know if that would help me or not because then it doesn't get in that nozzle, but I just leave mine sitting here and I use it quite a bit. So, so that's it. So like I said, I'm going to put another coat of, um, my, whether you're using Elmer's or whatever you're using, but my matte medium over this, um, just to make sure everything's glued down good. So one more final glue, let it dry. And then I'll see you in the next video. So be kind to each other. You never know what battle somebody else is fighting. And I hope you guys are following me along and doing this. Please post, tag me on Facebook. I love it, love it, love it. And I think it's me sitting in the light. Because when I moved over, I don't know why I keep still now. But uh, I hope you guys have a great day. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.